launch. Act two begins. Come, come, everyone behind Adolf, form the ranks. The camera is rolling. March. Hell no. Come on, show us how it's done. Into the ranks, Batman. We march together. Not a chance. This is my first ever march. Darling, it's fun. Look at Lotta. She's a natural. Now we are having a party. We are making a movie. Stand here, Batman. Don't be a killjoy, Rudy. Look at Herr Hitler. All of you. Eyes closed. We march into an imaginary world. Follow the orders, Batman. Eyes closed. This is bizarre. Ha! Two, three, four. March. March. To battle. To battle. Battle? What the hell are you talking about? Silence in the ranks. March. March. Come on, darling. Good little soldiers. Good little soldiers. March. March. Hop, two, three, four. Hop, two, three, four. Take us forward, Adolf. Hop, two, three, four. Faster. Two, three, four. Hop, two, three, four. The machine guns are calling to us. Faster. Hop, two, three, four. Hop, two, three, four. Hop, two, three, four. Let's march. March. Come on, my Prussian warrior. Show us. Show us. Show us. March. March. Hop, two, three, four. Hop, two. Can you see the bombs bursting in air? Bombs, 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 bombs! Hop, two, three, four, march! Rudy! March. Rudy! Oh my god, he's going to fall! What is wrong? Rudy! Hop, two, three, four, hop, two, three, four, hop, two, three, four, hop, two, three, get up, you Prussian bastard! Up! March! Get away from him! The gas! <laughs> Rudy! What is he doing? He'll tear out his eyes, grab his hands! I have him! The gas! <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. The gas is gone. It's, it's all right. What are you doing, Herr Bauer? What is wrong with him? I have seen this in battle. A seizure. He, he is frozen. Oh my god! I am going to close his eyes. His mouth. Rudy! Dear, dear Rudy. This man was in the war. He was, Herr Hitler. Fear, fear, dark, fear, dark. What, what is it, darling? Fear, dark. What are you saying? These scars are from battle. Fear, dark, overcomes, overcomes me. I, I don't understand him. I am frightened. Herr Bauer, we should call a doctor. Wait a few minutes. He will come back to us. Fear, fearful darkness. What is he saying? Where were you wounded? He should be left alone. Where? Fearful, fearful. Where did this happen? He should be left alone. Herr Hitler, please. Hip, hip. What, darling? Hip, hip. 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 Yes. <laughs> I was there. I was there, blinded by the gas. How terrible. How glorious. I raise my glass to you, Adolf. In him I see myself. Move aside. Let me next to him. It means... Very much to be with a comrade from the trenches. A comrade scarred by battle. Sit up, comrade. Lean against me. We will rest here in the trenches together. You received awards? Did you, my friend? Yes. The Iron Cross. Yes. 
When I was a youth, I grieved, oh, I grieved that I had been born at a time when the temples of glory were only erected to merchants, to state bureaucrats. When I was in the war, I thought, now, now, the valor of those who fight for the fatherland will be lifted, lifted to, to the heights of the highest mountains. But no, soldiers cower in speaking of it. This will be changed. This will be changed. You will wear your medals proudly. I promise you. Oh, my heart is pounding so. Let us stand up. Together. Stand for the fatherland. Stand before a hero of Germany, the only common soldier in all the army to receive the Iron Cross, first class. Herr Hitler. Put your arm around my shoulder, darling. No. No. Thank you. I will be all right. I salute you, my gallant comrade. There is no greater valor than to stand for the fatherland. You must never give in to shame or doubt because of those who betrayed us. Wear your medals. Proudly. Proudly. I have never heard such inspiration. No. No, what, darling? The medals, I cannot. You see here, on my face, I wear enough reminders of the war. Darling, Betts, did you know about the Iron Cross? He's never spoken about it, about any of the war, never. And you, Franz? You were in the war? I was. Do you speak of it? For many of us, like Herr Bettmann, the battles go on. There is much we never say, except to each other. <laughs> so touching. My darling, how you've suffered. And I didn't know. You've hidden the war inside. But Adolf is right. You shouldn't be ashamed to speak about it. Rudy, there should be no shame between us. Look, look at this ring. You gave it to me in trust, as a bond. We are one now. It, it was not shame that kept me from speaking. Darling. What is it then? Please, please tell me. Repugnance. Repugnance? I did not seek a glorious war like Herr Hitler. I hated, hated the very notion of war. Its intrusion on my life, the falseness, utter falseness, that it is gallant. I hated what it made me do. What it made me become. What are you saying? What do you think the war did to you? There is nothing about you to hate. <laughs> Except that he is more the pacifist than the patriot. You! Shut up! Herr Hitler, I am sorry for the way I have spoken to you. I misjudged you. In doing that, I showed the lack of character in myself. I am... I am... Humbled? Is that it? The mighty Prussian is humbled? Allow him to speak, Eckhart. Let me have your hand, darling. I want this wonderful woman who will be my wife to hear what I have to say. I want you, who will be my mother and sister, to hear me. Herr Hitler, what you say 
It is possible I have not understood my own state of mind. Perhaps, perhaps I have felt betrayed, doubted. So many fellows, good fellows, banished, lost to the darkness, a fearful darkness that, that will not go away. I'm so sorry. Oh, Rudy. People carry on in their normal ways, as though none of it had happened or mattered. But you are a hero. No. Herr Hitler says you are. I am not. Herr Hitler, our experiences in battle, there are terrible similarities. But now, after the war, we are in such different states. I remain damaged. Rudy. The physical wounds, they are apparent. But they have healed. The damage here in my head is less obvious and has not healed. As you see, I am sorry to have inflicted my demons on you. You needn't apologize, not to anyone. Especially us. We are so proud of you. We are. Oh, Rudy. My heart is breaking for you. Lorda, Lorda, come here. I am so happy. You will be like a sister to me. You make our hearts joyful. Do not be concerned. What you have seen, you should not have seen. It just burst out. I had no control. I was weak. I am so sorry. I will put myself back together. We will help you, my love. We will, Rudy. Herr Hitler, you lived through the horrors, but you have found a strength, a purpose. I am so curious. If you would tell me, how have you done this? How? Come beside me, comrade. Come. I will tell you of a moment in my life. A night when I became lost in the fearful darkness that torments you. It was a night that became a revelation. I was in the hospital. A pastor came to us. I could not see with the, the pain in my eyes, the pain from the gas, but I could hear. He said, he said Germany was to sign the armistice. <laughs> I had not wept since I stood at the grave of my dear, dear mother. But now, I could not help myself. <laughs> I, what, 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 was it for this surrender so many had died in the mud of fields and trenches? Was this the meaning of sacrifice for German mothers whose beloved sons were taken to war, never to be seen again? Was it for surrender that wounded comrades like you struggle with demons? The days that followed in the hospital were terrible. Hatred grew in me. Hatred for those responsible for this monstrous event. Miserable, degenerate criminals! The shame of indignation, disgrace, burned my brow. I felt all was lost. But then, in the darkest of the night, like the flash from a, a bomb, my fate became known to me. I laughed at my shame. I knew I would overcome the fearful darkness. 
My destiny was clear. I would dedicate my life to restoring the honor of the Fatherland. Yes. Yes, Herr Hitler. Since that night, I have felt the presence of a godlike figure taking me forward, compelling me. At first, I did not understand how I was to take on this sacred duty. I found myself cast into the, the great mass of the people among the common folk. I, I felt like I was stumbling in, in the wilderness, a soldier with an uncertain purpose. But then, my path became clear. Herr Hitler, if it is too hard for you to tell us... Adolf, earlier in the evening, I told them about our first meeting at the Munich Beer Hall. I did not tell them that that occasion was the turning point for you, for our fatherland. You spoke about Germany not being defeated. You said the war goes on. Helena, I assure you and your guests, we had heard this message before. But something was extraordinarily different on this occasion. That drunken crowd listened. It became so quiet. I could hear the rats under the floorboards. It was as if everybody had frozen with their eyes on the speaker. A captivating spectacle. I have chills recalling it. And when Adolf finished speaking, everybody was asking, Who is this stranger? And I tell you, at that moment, his path had been found. My briefcase. Where's my briefcase? At your feet, Herr Eckhart. <gasps> Where did I put that document? Here, here it is. This, this is what began that night in the beer hall. Read it, Helena. My goodness. We have not heard of this in Berlin. You will soon enough. Please, Helena, let me see it. The National Socialist German Workers' Party... Nazis will suffice. The Nazis will hold a giant demonstration in Munich. Herr Adolf Hitler will speak about the future of the Fatherland. It was two weeks ago. Adolf, you gave the speech? Of course he did. There have been many. There will be many more. How extraordinary. Until now, Germany has not been blessed with such a great man. <laughs> a great man. He is convinced I am a great man. There is only one real leader once in a blue moon. I had despaired. We would find him until now. I have this, this overwhelming sense that Dietrich is right. Frau Berstein, you honor me with such an idea, but, but it is easy for him to be dramatic, to point at me and say, there is our Messiah. For me, it is all an enigma that must be unraveled, peeled back like the artichoke. Bravo, Adolf. First, I must understand, must 
absorb into my being simple truths. Truths that the people can embrace. Then, then, I must tell the people these truths so they are understood. So they seize upon emotions. So they inspire passionate devotion. As you have seen, this is a task that gives me an appetite. A very big appetite. <laughs> Lovely Fraulein. Tell me, what do you think of our German cooking? I have to admit, Adolf, the blood sausage is an acquired taste. It gives you pain here in the belly. <laughs> I recommend the, the pastries. But you've eaten them all, and good for him. I am a bad boy. Come with me, Herr Hitler, to the kitchen. We shall find you something to eat. Come, come. Herr Bauer, please, resume your playing. His speeches, they are well received. Well received? <laughs> they jump to their feet, they fall at his feet. They're entranced. Their cheers can be heard for miles. Adolf is such a comfort to Rudy. Thank you for, for bringing them together. Ha! Hitler, the common soldier, comforts your Prussian warrior. Please, no more bickering. But I am flattered by what you say. You see, lovely Fraulein, when Adolf comforts your Rudy, you hear the words of me. Please, please. When your Adolf speaks, you peer into the mind of Dietrich Eckhart. You do not think so? I assure you, Hitler is a man of blood, a babbler of dreams, not a man of thought, of conviction. You do not believe me? I will show you. It is here, in my briefcase. A flag? I will open it for you. He Eckhart, not on the piano! Lotta, it cannot be touched! It must be moved! Let go of it! Rudy, please! Let go, Lotta! Let go! How can Franz play? Put your flag someplace else, Eckhart. On that table. It belongs on the piano. Play Wagner, pretty boy. Wagner! Auntie, Adolf, thank goodness you're back. Mama, tell him to move it. What is that, Dietrich? This, my dear is the symbol of our movement, of our Nazi party. That is a swastika. Yes, pretty boy. A symbol of power for the ancient Aryans. Now, it is a symbol of power for the Aryan people of today. Herr Hitler, you have given us much tonight. Please allow us to give something to you. Franz, please. Is it possible for you to play from Tristan und Isolde without music sheets? Yes. Yes, I think I know it well enough. Herr Eckert, we must remove the flag. I think it will be all right, Fraulein Bestein.
This is for you, my brother in arms. Wagner brings to life heroism, splendor of love, life, the nobility of death, as only we Germans can know them. When, when a Wagner performance ends, I feel gripped by a great, great sadness. Oh, it is the same as when one strips the ornaments from a Christmas tree. I know exactly what you mean. The Bayreuth Festival must be paradise for you. I... I have been there only in my dreams. In your dreams? Oh, Lotta, he has not been to Bayreuth. He must go. Of course he must, but even I, I have never met the Wagners. How terrible for them. Oh, I thought you were going to be nice to me. Siegfried and Winifred Wagner are my dear friends. I know they would appreciate an introduction to Herr Hitler. His views on the cultural decline of our country would be of much interest. You can do that for me. <laughs> of course she can. Like this. <laughs> the Liebestod. Oh. Deutschland, 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 nothing in the wide world surpasses this land, this people. It must be a greater honor to be a citizen of this Reich as a street cleaner than to be a king in a foreign state. This is what you must tell us, all of us. It is my hope that soon you will read of our movement in the newspapers. You will hear us through this invention of the radio. You will see us. In movies. All of Germany will know you, comrade. We will. I had despaired that the greatness of the fatherland was lost. Now. I know that we will reclaim our birthright of leadership in the world. We will be proud again. Germany will rise to the mountaintops. The fatherland will be a beacon to all. We will march as one people. March for a just peace. We hear you, my brother. A just peace. Not the peace of surrender, of cowards, defeatists. It will be a peace won by victorious overlords, striking down the foe with invincible swords. Oh, Deutschland, Deutschland, Deutschland! What is it, Herr Bauer? Why do you stop playing? Why do you stand there? Play, piano boy. Play. I... I beg your pardon. A piece... One by swords. How can that be? Why do you speak? You are here to play. Let us hear what Herr Piano Player has on his polluted mind. Why must you ridicule him? I must ask, as a soldier, do you mean there will be another war? Herr Bauer, you are intruding. I have been telling all of you there will not be another war. The war did not end! Dietrich, calm yourself! It did not end! Dietrich! The war goes on, and on, and on! What are you talking about? The war goes on until there is justice! We already gave you justice! Bets! <laughs> we will fight, and fight, until every trace of the shame of surrender is wiped away! But the war was killing Germany. No! That is English wishful thinking, Bolshevik propaganda, American lies! You're a goddamn fool. Betts, you will not speak that way in my home. Easy, darling. I have seen that symbol before. The swastika. It is used by demagogues preaching hate. 
Rudy? Who is he? One of those radicals from the streets? Open your pants, pretty boy. Dietrich! Show them who you are! What is he saying? What his kind always say. My kind? <laughs> Let us speak of your kind, pretty boy. You, who only know how to ridicule genius, undermine vision. What is he talking about? Jews. He's saying you are a Jew? What is going on here, Eckhart? Show them who you are, pretty boy. What in Christ's name are you getting at? Mama, tell Herr Eckhart we do not speak that way in our home. Show them! You will stop, or what? He'll throw you out. He will. He will do no such thing. His newspaper, the Volkischer Beobachter, is the worst of them. Everybody in Munich knows what it is, a sewer of hate. Be quiet! I am so sorry, Dietrich. Mama, you apologize to him? Is the pretty soldier boy ashamed to admit what he is? Show them! You are abominable. Time for you to leave, Eckhart. Rudy, he is my guest in my home. Take your flag, Eckhart, and get the hell out of here! You do not give me orders! Do you think I am a peasant on your estate? Now what am I to do? This is your doing. It is you! Mama, Herr Bauer has done nothing wrong. I pay him to play the piano, only to play. I asked him not to intrude, repeatedly. There is something about him that is... is base, offensive! Helena, be reasonable. He has no fault here. I want him out of my home! Frau Bestein, please, please, it, it is my... It is my honor to play for you. I am so grateful. I did not mean to intrude. I I will play. Only play for Fräulein Miller, Herr Bettmann, for a celebration. I don't want that. Enough! They are trouble. All of their kind trouble. You are trouble, you hun. Hun? <laughs> You call me a hun? You? You're leaving now! Do not touch me, you Prussian shit! Oh! You call me a hun? Uh, Come here. I will open my pants uh, for you, no. show you the hun, uh, give you what you want, you nobility hunting schlotzer from America. Uh, Do not touch me! Let him go, Rudy! Do not touch me, you lunatic! You, Bauer, get out of my sight! Mama, he will only play! Get out! I, I am so sorry. So sorry. No, Franz! Do not leave! Play! Get away from him! Play! B play for me, Franz! Lotter, come here! Auntie, be gentle with her! You call that vile person by his given name? <laughs> Auntie, don't hit her. Go to the hallway, now. Mama! Out! Dietrich, my dear friend, I will make this up to you. Herr Hitler, I beg of you, do not judge our family by what has happened here. I feel in my heart for so much that you have said. You are on a noble mission. Rudy, I am Outraged. Helena, this is... Do not interrupt me. I am deeply offended by you and Betts. I am outraged that you brought this, this vile person into my home. He has destroyed his career as a pianist. He had better be gone when I return. Lottie? Lottie, where are you? How did this happen? His kind are trouble, only trouble. This is so sad. Rudy, what will we do? I, I must go to them. This is so sad. Yes, Adolf. Take our banner. We will get the hell out of here.
What are you doing, Herr Hitler? I put this symbol of our movement around my shoulders. Adolf, you pray like a Jew? My political enemies, in our movement, they say I am a Jew. You? Nobody says that. Hitler is the name for a Jew. That is absurd. They whisper it. Never. I have heard them. Take this symbol. This symbol of our movement, Eckhart. Open it again on the piano. Play the Liebestod. Jew boy. Play it. Ignore him, Franz. My friend. When I was growing up in the Austrian countryside, I went for weeks without seeing Jews. I knew almost nothing about them. I never thought about them. When I moved to Vienna, it was different. There were many. They were <laughs> a big deal. A whole section of the press was devoted to them. I avoided those anti-Semitic newspapers. I felt their language was unworthy of a great religion. I saw in their pages the products of envy, bigotry, ignorance. Comrade, I knew you could not be like him. <laughs> you live in a cave. A dark, frightened cave of privilege, Batman. The world outside turns upside down, explodes. You see nothing, understand nothing. You are a cripple trapped in your fearful, fearful darkness. And you, Eckhart? Who are you? I have nothing more to say to the Jew. You are what Herr Hitler has said, the product of envy, bigotry, Ignorance. The time of my people is coming. The time of your people is dead. Do not let him bait you, Franz. Herr Hitler, we cannot let him speak that way. Not about a comrade from the war. My friend, did you see Jews at the front? Did I see what? In the trenches. On the battlefields, did you see them? Jews? Of course I did. <laughs> I did not. But when I went on leave, when I was in the hospital for my wounds, they were there, behind the lines, away from the battlefields. They were there. That is a lie, a lie! In the offices, nearly every clerk was one of them, and nearly every one of them was a clerk. That is lies! I was there! Of course you were. Nearly the whole production for the war was under their control. They raped the fatherland. My friend, you told me you pained for the way we soldiers were shamed, how we Germans were demonized. And yet Herr Bauer, a fellow soldier, a German, is to be treated this way? Listen to me. One day in Vienna, my cosmopolitan thinking changed. I came upon this creature with black curls clad in a filthy caftan. Is this a, a Jew? Was my first thought. As I stared at the strange face and scrutinized its features, my mind reshaped this question into another. Is this a German? Herr Hitler, what on earth are you saying? Listen, listen. From that day on, an idea formed within me. One cannot describe them the way one describes a Catholic, a Lutheran, they are more than a religion. They call themselves the chosen people. They are a race. A race. A race, separate and distinct. What is he saying, Franz? Herr Batman, they are anti-Semites, that is all. Some argue 
Are there not German Jews? Of course there are. No! No, my friend. The Negro may sing in our cabarets, but he is not a German. <laughs> he is always the Negro. The Slav may work on our railroads, but he is always the Slav. The Jew may live in Berlin, Munich, Leipzig, anywhere, but he is always the Jew. But he is also a German. No, no, my friend. The Jews are a race apart from the Aryan race. From the German people. A race in mortal opposition. Mortal opposition? To the Germans? I have never heard such a thing. Our German race creates the beauty and dignity of a higher humanity. His race pollutes all that is good. Humanity? You call this humanity? Here is the truth. The total truth. You, Batman, my comrade in arms. You, Dietrich Eckhart, cannot be Germans and Jews. I cannot be a German and a Jew. Him! He cannot be a Jew and a German. And you, you cannot be a voice of the German people. You are a bigoted demagogue. Like your Wagner. You impugn Wagner? He was not even human. He was a sickness, a creature without compassion or charity. <laughs> Herr Hitler, this is truth. <laughs> what have the Jews given us? Betrayal. They sold you comrades out. They traded our German valor and honor for an armistice that filled their banks with money that gave them control of the fatherland, the Reichstag. Ha! Spatgewert, a streck und vier. Now I understand. That's their real truth. What do you mean? Ha! Tell your stupid Prussian. Blame the Jews for losing the war, stabbing Germany in the back. That is their truth, their lie. To what end? The same as always, to scapegoat, to manipulate the people. Look! Look here at the symbol of our movement. Soul of our nation, called to our holy crusade. A march to restore the honor to the fatherland. The sacred duty of every German! Sacred duty? Join us, comrade. We will wipe away the shame of the traitors, the criminals. We are thousands, soon hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions. Join us! No! Anyone who stands in our way will be crushed! Join us! No! Hear the Fuhrer! Give me our symbol. Wave it, my Fuhrer, for all Germany to see. I will march with a symbol of honor held high. A soldier for the almighty creator, fighting for the Lord's work. Oh, Deutschland, Deutschland, Deutschland. Give me that! You throw it to the floor! You are dooming yourself, comrade. You, you are the betrayer. The criminal, the liar! What? What? What are you doing with me? Let him go! Rudy! Rudy! What is going on here? Bets, please go! Go away! Adolf! Get me out. Adolf, you're bleeding! Get me out! She Beat him! Beat him! Get me out! He is bleeding! Come. Adolf, come. And you, Prussian beast, you will regret this more than you can dream. Come, come, Adolf. Come. I will take care of you. Evil. Such evil. Rudy. 
Rudy, you, you beat him. Fräulein Miller. Beat they, him. Fräulein Miller, they are fiends, monsters. Rudy, why would you do this? He was defending me. Defending you? Yes, from their obscenity, their sickness, they are monsters. You call Adolf a monster? Is that what he is, Rudy? Your comrade? Who held you in his arms? Herr Bauer, are you the problem? Are you? Like Eckhart said? No, my darling. No. I have heard how they can be. Fräulein Miller, no. What am I supposed to think? Or am I not supposed to think? Am I just supposed to go away? But... You beat him! Is this what you meant? Is this what the war made you become? Are you the monster? Bets. Bets, bets, bets. Please, let me explain. Oh, Rudy. How could you? I, I don't even know you. Bets, come back. Oh, God. How could this happen? I... I am. What did you say? I am a monster. You? It was not in my nature. In the war, it all became twisted, turned me into something else. No, no, it is not you. They are inhuman. I hate, hate what I have become. Herr Petman, do not do this. You acted with nobility. Yes, and courage. You did. And I must ask myself, if they had attacked you, Instead of me, what would I have done? Would I have stood up for you? Franz. The irony, the terrible irony is that I am, I am not a Jew. Did you hear what I said? I am. Not a Jew. I... I could not tell them. I... would not. I would not give them the... the satisfaction of intimidating me. No, I would not. But I should have. I would have spared all of us this... this calamity. They would not have spewed their poison. No Jew, no problems. Franz, my father once told me, the Jews, he said, the Jews live in a pretend world. They had been among the Germans for so long, more than a thousand years. They live now in freedom, and they had forgotten. They had forgotten that for almost all those centuries, their brothers and sisters had been hidden behind ghetto walls. My father told me, he said that was why some Jews tried so hard to be invisible as Jews. To be more German than the Germans. My grandfather, my esteemed grandfather, a man of the land, a 
Prussian bearing, a loyal soldier to the Kaiser, German to the core. But, but he, he was a man who buried his past. What are you saying, Herr Batman? You? Herr Batman? It was the life given to me. I did not intend to deceive. It is all I have ever known to be what I am not. I never thought anyone would judge me, could judge me. Oh, Herr Batman. I am so sorry for what they did to you, Franz. They will harm you. You must leave. And you? I live within my family's deception. They threatened you. They will never touch me. I will not leave, Herr Bettmann. Franz. Please accept this. I am with you as you were with me. Will you play, Franz? Play? Rudy! Rudy! Lotte, where is Beth? He is calling people. He is saying terrible things. Who is? Eckert! I must speak to her. No, Franz, do not let him go there. Herr Batman! I must explain. They are coming for you. Who? Eckert's people. Do you hear that? You must leave. Do, do you hear it? What? Do you? No. No! Who is it? It is him. They are coming. You must leave. I will tell Beth the truth. Rudy, she will not listen to you. You must leave. Friends, what are you doing? I will play. For Herr Batman. I will play. For all of us. This concludes the Citizen Arts presentation of March. Our cast. Canon Vino is Franz Bauer. Jenna Krasowski, Lata Bestein. Bridget Gabe, Elizabeth Betts Miller. John Short, Rudolf Rudy von Bettmann. Angela Vitali, Helena Bestein. Peter Marinos, Dietrich Eckhart. Giancarlo Herrera, Adolf Hitler. And our pianist for the evening, Keiju Mori, playing Ludwig van Beethoven, Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, Ellen Mandel, Johann Strauss, Justice Wilhelm Lira, George First, and Richard Wagner. March was written by Jim Gabe. This podcast production is directed by Jim. Bridget Gabe is producer and co-director. Jeff Lewis is co-producer and technical director. Jill Gabe is executive producer. Special thank yous to Dubway Studios, New York City, especially Keenan Dubois, recording engineer, and Pablo Morales, assistant engineer, and to Flux Studios of New York City. This podcast of March is a production of the Citizen Arts Education Company, All Rights Reserved.